Paul Grimwood, welcome again to the University of Huddersfield. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be uh, here. You're giving a talk tonight uh, about uh, pace of change in uh, retailing. Um, what what uh, evidence, if you like, have you got of that? I mean, you've been uh, in charge of Nestle now for a long time. I think what's interesting for me is uh, tonight I'll sort of just talk about um, really my observations and what I think is happening in the marketplace. And one of the big learnings for me is, is, is actually it's not, I'm using US retailing as an example, but actually the pace of change out there driven by a number of factors is, is absolutely in, in, incredible. Um, you only have to look at the challenges that Jaguar and Land Rover have got because actually, yes, the Chinese market is currently suffering. Number two, they've got problems with Brexit. But number three, actually got a complete change of technology, which is driving major change in, in their business. You only have to look at the high street in terms of re retailing, so bricks and mortar versus online and, and digital. I think one of the things that you know, I want to sort of throw on the table tonight is to really get people thinking about pace of change. Uh, do we talk about it? Are companies structured for it? Do we spend enough time thinking about it? And if we do, do decide on change and we do decide on a sort of what is our future environment, how do we structure an organisation and get the people with the right skills and right mindset to actually support that level of change? And being quite honest with you, you know, as I sort of I've come toward the end of my uh, career with Nestle and I pick up one or two other sort of, you know, advisory roles, this is actually what I'm being asked to advise on and what I've been asked to speak on because actually people are struggling with the issue of getting to grips with change, change management and speed of change. And so, you know, for me, it's a, a very interesting topic, uh, but it's a very relevant topic. Uh, and the famous quote, which I haven't yet found who actually this is attributed to, but it's been said so many times, is that basically um, uh, change has never been so fast and it will never be so slow again. And uh, I mean, you, you bring up sort of two points. Are, are there uh, organisations out there that are just struggling with the speed of it all? Oh yes, and yeah, very, very much so. And 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 it's uh, struggling to the point of going bust, struggling really? to the point of not being in business anymore. Are we talking small companies here or large companies? Um, we're or talking. Both? We're talking. Some of the companies. This particular company had a turnover of four billion dollars. And the chief exec and I were talking about change and change management. And I said to him, what's your ambition for your company in the next um, sort of 18 months? And he looked me straight in the eye, $4 billion turnover, and he said, to be here in 18 months. Now, that shows you where change is you know, happening everywhere. Whether you're, whether you're a small operation, a one, two, three man band, or whether you're a multi-billion dollar turnover company, change is affecting everybody, um, but people are struggling with the pace of change. And I have to say, you know, I've probably had now a 35 year working career. Um, I've never seen change like it in the last 10 years. Uh, the, the, the acceleration keeps on coming because technology, because information flows, because our, our ability to understand what's going on on a global basis and transfer best practice globally is at the press of a button where it used to take months, if not years, to see best practice from Japan transferred, for example, into the UK. Now it's in, it's in hours and minutes. Mm. And, and I think, you know, um, we also have a situation where the markets per se are reacting so quickly that the level of competitive intensity is also at a, at a point we've, we, we've never seen before. And again, I'll give some examples of that tonight. I mean, obviously, the, the remedy is to stay ahead of change. Do you feel Nestle achieved that? What, one of the things that I'm proud of of Nestle is we've just cel celebrated our 150th anniversary. And for a company that's involved in fast-moving consumer goods like we are, to actually get 150 years down the road and still be the company we, we were based in the same little village that we are, I think shows our ability to sort of thrive and survive and react. That said, Nestle, like everybody else, has got to continually up its game to be better than it was last year, to be quicker than it was last year, to be more innovative than it was, uh, was last year. And I think that's something that we will constantly focus on and we constantly talk about um, how we get better. 
And I think, you know, to your other point, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a constant curve of improvement. Um, and, you know, actually the skill is to ride the curve, not to struggle, focus, improve, struggle, focus, improve. It's a case of um, evolution when you're running your business, um, not revolution. And so being light on your feet. Well, light on your feet. And sometimes when you've got to have revolution in a business, it can be because there are market um, elements that change and you're not in control of those mm -hmm. and you've got to react really quickly. Sometimes you've got to react because you didn't react quickly enough. And, you know, uh, tonight when we talk, we'll be talking about actually that speed of change and what people can do in a variety of different organizations, whether it's small, medium or large, to actually make sure they're talking about change and, and re change is representative in their business. Mm. Um, you're a Huddersfield graduate. Um, what advice would you give to uh, graduates today uh, uh, for those who want to be the head of Nestle? and companies like that. There's one major thing that I, that I um, tell everybody. When you, when, you come into, um, uh, when you come to a university like this, you don't always know what you want to do. And so, you know, to spend your time, if, you, if that's the case, in, during your first year, to really start trying, sample everything, do everything, talk to as many people as you can. And one of the things I often say um, to, to my MBA intake, I have an MBA intake and I have a graduate intake, and I also have an intake at 18 and 16 on the apprenticeships uh, type of scheme. But when I say to my graduates, I, I, I walk in and they're there on the first day, and I say to them, could I just ask you one question? And everybody's you know, raring to go. And I say, hands up, who's got a decent degree? And everybody's hand goes up because they're the graduate intake. And I go, okay, so we're all the same. What are you going to make yourself, how are you going to make yourself different? And that can be by um, uh, looking for other uh, interests within the business. It could be by uh, taking, uh, t taking some risks, to, uh, by actually getting involved in projects that aren't necessarily part of your job. It can be actually getting experiences with other companies or other areas to actually broaden uh, your skill set. In other words, to move you beyond the piece of paper so that you get people who can actually inspire you with the things they've done over and above the norm. Somebody who's done an extra project, somebody's gone an extra mile, somebody uh, who does other things outside of work, somebody who makes you think, do you know what, they seem like a really interesting person. Uh, some of the best you know, uh, people I've met uh, are what I call package deals. They've got a decent degree, but they've got so much around them that has developed their interpersonal skills and, and them as a person. They're the people you want to spend time with. They're the people that motivate you. And they're the people who usually progress. And, uh, and, and finally, you're uh, uh, stepping down in May, uh, mm -hmm. retiring. Uh, I, I, uh, semi. Do you have an, semi. Are you, uh, do you have an allotment, I was going to say? No, uh, what I was going to say was, uh, uh, what, what's going to happen then to uh, Paul Greenwood? What are you going to do? I well, can't it's see you just hanging up your... Uh, no, well, it's, uh, inter it's interesting. It's interesting because one of the reasons that I've actually decided to, um, uh, to, to, to stand down is to actually get that elusive thing that you never get when you're a CEO, which is a thing called work-life balance. And, uh, and to get to a, the top of a good organization, I'm afraid you, you know, the, there is a thing called having to put the hours in, yeah. uh, whether you like it or loathe it. And, live in different countries and move around and when you're looking for those experiences and looking to stand out you have to put the time in and uh, and I've really felt now that whilst I've had a fantastic career and I, you know I've, the Nestle organization has been a super company to work for actually I'd like to do some other things I'd like to have some time for myself so my famous saying now is I would like to turn my my uh, my weekends into my weeks in other words you know if I if I can get involved in different projects, different initiatives, diff uh, advisory roles, non-executives or non-executive chairman or whatever it is, and I can do that for a couple of days a week, um, then I'm going to be a happy man. Paul, I hope that we see you at the university again. It would be my pleasure to be here. Thanks very much. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.